recurrent neural networks are so um, like widely used in natural language processing that it's really crucial to understand these neural networks. Okay? And they form the basis of modern machine translation pipelines and even speech processing pipelines would often use a neural network, a recurrent neural network somewhere in the model. So let's start with an example. We will actually start with a neural network that you've seen before and then we will go to recurrent neural network and I will do this with the specific task that you've seen before which is language modeling. Okay? Which you can think of as predicting the next word in a sentence. Okay? So if you know about feed-forward neural networks what you can do is if you have a sentence like a very very long time ago in a and you want to predict the next word then what you can do is you can use a sliding window over the sentence and in this case I use a window of four words okay so I take the last four words I use and now you know about one not embeddings I use one up one not embeddings okay I look up the corresponding embedding in my matrix E okay you've got a little E1 here which is just E times X1 and that would be that little uh, vector there and now you've got you've got an E2 and an E3 and an E4 and you concatenate them okay and then you pass this through a hidden layer and the hidden layer you pass through uh, a softmax layer and you get an output over the vocabulary of the words for the word that will follow these four words so just say here so the output of the model will be values between 0 and 1 and how many of them will you have? The size of your vocabulary. Okay, and sometimes I use that set notation. So you've got the set of words in your vocabulary. And sometimes I'm just lazy and I just write V as the size of the vocabulary. And I will use that again, which is why I'm telling you about it. Okay, everyone happy on the inside? This is pretty nice. Okay, I'm learning some word embeddings here at the bottom while jointly actually training a language model. It's pretty cool. What's frustrating about this model? Okay, let me, let me ask you this question, okay? And we're going to do a little, little test. I say, a long time ago in a, okay? Do you think the word galaxy is likely to follow? Okay, so the opening scene of Star Wars, like, which was made in the year I was born, the first one, okay? So yes, if I have a long time ago in a, then galaxy is possibly a word to follow. Let me ask you a follow-up question. What if I say a very, very, very long time ago? Okay, so I'll repeat that. A very, very, very long time ago in a... Is Galaxy still as likely to follow? No. No, because Star Wars doesn't start with that. Star Wars starts with a long time ago in a... In a it doesn't start with a very, very long time ago in a... It's still a likely s sequence, but the next word is probably going to be, I don't know kingdom far far away something like that okay so the problem with these neural language models is that you have this fixed length okay a word that occurs um, before these words can't actually influence the prediction here it can't influence it because it doesn't it, it doesn't have this long-term context so the question is can we come up with a neural network that could process inputs of arbitrary length that could actually process something that has um, a long intro year. GPT, okay, now we're in a different world, right? GPT, actually, when you ask it a question in chat GPT, you ask it a particular question, that model actually feeds in the entire discussion that you've had up to that point and then predicts the next word one by one. That's actually what happens. Now, if, G, uh, if GPT only had a context window of four words, it will probably not be able to have a coherent discussion. So we need a model that's able to actually process a sequence length that's much longer than four words. And in the best case, we want a model that can process arbitrary sequence lengths. That it can process 10 sentences with 10 words in it, but it can also process this, um, a whole discussion with a few thousand words in it. Okay. And that's what uh, a recurrent neural network uh, gives you. And we'll talk about the basic recurrent neural network. That's not the one that's used in GPT and, and all these fancy models, but the underlying principle is, um, is, is similar. Okay. And we will get to the fancy models by building up from recurrent neural networks. So instead of introducing a recurrent neural network uh, in a formal way, I'm just going to jump straight into 
an example of where a recurrent neural network is going to be used. And fortunately, it's going to be a familiar example because I'm just going to do language modeling with a recurrent neural network. Here is a simple recurrent neural network language model. Okay, and it looks like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the bottom to the top of the model. But as a spoiler, what this model predicts at the output is the next word that comes in the sequence because we're training it for language modeling. So the input to this model might be sentence start a long time ago in a and the question is what is the next word that follows and this model, this recurrent neural network, the RNN will predict the distribution for the word that will, um, that will follow. And I should say the RNN part is this uh, red part here what happens on the output and what happens in the input that would be task specific and because we're looking at language modeling it's structured in a specific way so the input to this model um, what's the input um, we've now learned about one out embeddings so i'm just feeding in one out embeddings corresponding to the particular word in that input um, position so um, each little xt is a one out vector um, so they are v elements in each of the one out vectors and each element in that one out vector is either zero or one corresponding on uh, to the word okay then this blue layer here what's that that is just our word embedding layer so here we've got our word embedding layer and that's calculated exactly like we did before by just taking so each of the word embeddings is just doing a lookup which is the same as multiplying an embedding matrix with a one out vector okay so that's the the blue layer there now, now we get to the magic part, which is the RNN there in red, there in the middle, okay? So what's going to happen is, we're going to have these things called hidden states. I'm going to look at one particular time point, and then we're going to just build it up from there, okay? So I'm just going to look at one particular um, point in time. So let's just look at this, like maybe, uh, we look at this like third time point here. So what we're going to have is we're going to have an H3, but I'll just call it HT for the arbitrary time. So H3, and what H3 will be is it will look a little bit like a feedforward neural network. In a feedforward net neural network, what do you have in the latent layer, like a hidden layer? You have some nonlinearity, which we will also have here, sigmoid ReLU, something like that. Okay, and then we've got a bunch of stuff in the inside. Okay, and in a normal feedforward neural network what you would have is you would take the input to the neural network and you would multiply that with some um, weight matrix right so you would have um, a weight matrix and in this case it's called IH for some reason which I will explain in a second and that neural network will take in the input okay so E3 in this case in the in the general case ET okay in a, a hidden layer within an, a feedforward neural network what else do you have if I do PyTorch dot, I can't remember the name, linear, something like that, what does it do? It takes the input and it multiplies that with the matrix, and Louise said it, but not very loudly. Uh, you have a bias vector that you also add. Okay, so you've got the bias vector, that's nice. Now, Naftali, you're completely right. What makes a recurrent neural network different from a feedforward neural network is this little arrow here. And what that arrow does is it says, my current hidden state won't just depend on what's happening at, on my input side now. It's also going to depend on what happened at the previous time step. Okay. So what you're going to do here is you're going to take another weight matrix, WHH, and you're going to multiply that with H2, the thing that happened at the previous time step, or in general, HT minus 1. And then you're going to add that to the other things. You can actually... Um, in some not notes, you will see that they actually stack HT minus 1 and ET and then have one weight matrix which combines them into, um, into one operation there. That's, the, that's equivalent to what I'm doing here. Okay, it's the same thing. Um, but I like this way of splitting them up because then you can see that the recurrent neural network takes both the current input into account, but it also takes into account what happened at the previous time step. That's then your, your hidden state at this time step and 3. Now, the important thing is that this happens actually at every time step. Okay, so at time step four, I'm going to read in the next word, get the embedding for it, get this vector here and feed that into, uh, into this little function here. 
But that time step is also going to take into account what happened at the previous time step. Okay? And at h5 and at h6, the same thing. So you have this line going through your model, which allows it to keep track of things that happened in the past. Okay? And you're not limited by a particular window length. You can actually, well, in principle, this very first vector will influence h1, h1 will influence h2, and so on. So in principle, this very first vector can actually have an influence on this very last vector by following this little for loop over time. It can do so in principle, but in practice sometimes it doesn't, and you need a few tricks to actually allow it to do that, and we will talk about that uh, in, in just a minute. Does this make sense? Okay, so it's, like, it's really like a feedforward neural network, except we've added these like little uh, lines before it. The important thing here is that at every time step, this weight matrix and this weight matrix is the same one across time. So the WHH I apply here is the same as the WHH that I apply here. The WIH input to hidden, input to hidden is the same at this time step and that time step and that time step. So we sometimes talk about tied weights over time. So Cassandra, you're entirely right. You can actually think of this thing um, I think PyTorch actually talks about cells, and this is one cell. It's the same thing, it gets applied over and over again. Um, what is different is the input, the actual stuff that goes in and, and comes out at every time step will be different. Um, but the process that you do every time step is exactly the same. For every time step, the WHH hidden to hidden and input to hidden, every time step those ones would be the same. and your and bias vector will also be the same. Okay, is everyone happy? Okay, cool. Let's just think about this, this thing only outputting uh, something at, at time step six, just for a moment. What you get as the output of your model is a vector, okay? Um, that vector will differ depending on whether I'm looking at the output here, 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 and here. And I haven't said it, but they are actually going to be outputs at the previous time steps as well. But for now, we're just focusing on this final time step, okay? So, but the output will depend. So you will have an output at time step six, for instance, okay? And the output will obviously depend on the parameters of the model, which are all these, all these weights and the single embedding matrix, right? All of that is your theta. Also this weight hidden to output, that would also be part of your theta, okay? The input to the model, how you can think about that is the sequence of vectors, of one of vectors in this case, up to time step six. That's the input to the model. Okay, and what comes out is another vector, and that vector is, um, you know, how big is that vector? How many elements in the output of the model if we're doing language modeling? V. Sp spot on. Um, if we're doing a softmax, what else can you tell me about that v-dimensional vector? It's probabilities. That's spot on. So they sum to... Uh, they sum to one and they're all values between zero and one. That's what pops out of that model. And sometimes I will use a shorthand notation to denote that by just saying it's the y hat at time step t. Okay, that's the output of the model. Okay, cool. How do you obtain, how do you obtain this vector from like this propagation through time? What you do is you take the last hidden straight at time step t. Um, so you take the last hidden straight at time step t. You multiply that with a matrix the hidden to output matrix, you add a bias, the output bias, you take the softmax, softmax of that thing, because I want to squash it so that it's between zero and one and it sums to one, so that it's probabilities, and that is your y hat t is equal to that softmax function. That gives you the distribution, the predicted distribution for what happens at the next time step. In other words, this time step here at x7, that's what this, um, what this output does. It says, is this galaxy or is it land? You know, or is it, I don't know, kingdom or something like that. Okay, uh, and I've quickly mentioned this before. There's actually an output at every time step. Okay, so you would actually have here at time step zero, you would have a y hat zero vector. And here at time step one, you would have a y hat one. Um, very quickly, what does this thing try and predict? What word does this thing try and predict? long that's right and this one uh okay and the time step here ago so it's trying to predict the basically what happens at t plus one 
Um, so, and so you've got this whole sequence of outputs. Okay, that's, that's a RNN embedded within a, a practical application. And I think you actually understand what the fudge is going on, okay, which is really cool.